who are in charge of monitoring and using human agents and human things to monitor everything. They're watching over everything. Why? Knowledge is power. They gain knowledge from people. You, you building dossiers on people that potentially you may have a run-in with, potentially people that you may not like. You're building uh, a, a sheet, a rap sheet on them of their likes and dislikes and what websites they go to and what they talk about on Facebook and what they watched on television and the movies and the books they read and everything. When you like stuff on the Internet, they keep a record of it and they know what you like and they know what you don't like. So now there's this record there, and they're watching over you as a leopard, observing. That was real interesting to me. In Jeremiah 5, 6, he said, A leopard shall watch over their cities, because that's primarily where it's all concentrated at. You go into the city, and you're going to have the street cameras. You're going to have the stoplight cameras. You're going to have the security cameras in every store. You're going to have... Um, uh, you're going to have um, uh, corner cameras on lamp posts and just cameras watching over. The big thing in St. Louis last year or two is these municipalities around the St. Louis area are all voting to put up cameras literally on just about every street corner there is in their town. Why? Or, or, and this is, you know, throwing up ideas of racism and everything else. They're going to put cameras up in high crime areas. Of course, the people who live there are going, ah, oh, you're doing that because you're racist. That's why you're doing it. No, because there's a lot of crime there, and it's not anybody else's fault that there's crime there, except for the criminals. So they're putting up these cameras everywhere, and they're watching and observing everything. Barack Obama ran for president twice as this, this liberal superhero god. He's going to champion the liberal cause. He's going to champion uh, civil rights and private rights. The ACLUs, they're going, that's our boy right there. Barack is our man. He's going he's gonna to champion the uh, civil liberties of this country. And it appears that Barack Hussein has actually done more to weaken this nation. He's done more as far as the spying or the observing over this nation. He's done more than any past president in the history of this country. He's a, when, he, when he, as a good liberal, should have said, well, we, you can't watch all those people. They're homosexuals. You can't watch what they're doing. Instead of doing that, he's just said, you know, let's ramp it up a little bit. And um, here's why I'm saying all this. Here is the transcript of what Barack Hussein said in his book, if you want to listen to it, you go to YouTube, type in the Leopard Dream body odor or whatever that is, Bo, Barack Obama, and you'll find Myrna's video on there. Uh, and if you want to, send her a little email and say, Myrna, thank you for posting this. Good, good one. So this is Barack Hussein reading this from his book. He is describing a dream that he had. And I want you to listen. These are his own words. Barack Hussein. I began to notice people looking behind me fearfully, rushing into their huts as I passed. Now, he is, um, he is in Kenya. He mentioned right after that being in Kis uh, uh, Kissimmee or Kissimmee. Uh, Kissimmee. Uh, I've been through there before. He was looking for his birth certificate. I don't know what he was doing there, but anyway. So, listen. he says, um, people rushing into their huts as I passed. I heard the growl of a leopard and started to run into the forest, tripping over roots and stumps and vines, until at last I couldn't run any longer, and I fell to my knees in the middle of a bright clearing. Panting for breath, I turned around to see that, listen to this now. Panting for breath, I turned around to see that day turned into night. Now, if you want to analyze, if I, I'm analyzing dreams. If you want to do that, get your Bible out. 
get your Bible out. Because I can show you from there that right now the Gentile world is living in daylight because the gospel, the light of the gospel is able to shine on all the Gentiles. Israel's living on the other side of the world. They're literally in darkness right now. And so they have the multiple, God, remember in Hebrews 1, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake unto us, uh, in times past, by his servants, the prophets, plural. And they represent the stars at night. There's a multiplicity of prophets that are speaking to Israel in the darkness. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. We are in that time now where we have the Son, the prophet, the apostle, the bishop of our souls, who is speaking to us. Uh, in, a, in a very clear voice. So we are, we are the children of the day. We are in the daytime right now. What's going to happen is that as the world turns, it's going to move around, and Israel is going to be in the light, and they're going to, the veil of Moses is going to come off because, it was so, because the sun was shining under there, and now they're going to see who that is. At that time, though, the Gentile world is going to be in darkness. Uh, just think of the themes of darkness in the scriptures. And God said, let there be light. Let there be light. Four words. And there was light. So the light is, is representative of the gospel. Uh, and God saw the light that it was what? Good. So that, I mean, there's your definition right there. And universally, everybody says light is good and darkness is bad. So we have those definitions there. So here's what happened. This is what happened when Barack Hussein, I think this is him. I don't know, maybe his dad or something like that, but, but this is the dream that he's describing. When he got out to the clearing, he could see that day turned to night. And then a giant figure looming as tall as the trees. This is what he sees now. He's out in the clearing, falls to his knees. It immediately turns dark. And he sees looming over him a giant figure, tall as the trees. Go read the Bible. You'll see that the Assyrian, who is a, a name for the Antichrist, is as tall as the cedars. Giants, that's what they were as tall as. They were as tall as trees. And he then goes on to describe, he said, a giant figure looming as tall as the trees, wearing only a loincloth and a ghostly mask. Now, I'm listening to this, and I'm going, Barack, you're giving me the creeps here. He's, I believe that this dream is definitely a spiritually originated dream. I believe in those. I believe they happen, and I believe this one in particular, a spiritually motivated dream. So he sees this. Now he's in darkness. He sees this giant figure looming over him as tall as the trees, wearing a loincloth and a ghostly mask. It's a spirit. It's a ghost is what it is. Then he described the eyes as lifeless. There's a clue right there. This is necromancy. It is hearing from the dead. He said, the lifeless eyes bored into me. And I heard a thunderous voice, think about that, saying only that, quote, it was time. He said, and my, and my entire body began to shake violently with the sound as if I were breaking apart. And then after that, he goes on to uh, uh, narrate some, some other passage from the book. But this, this really just sticks out at me. Here we, have, here we have this guy, this Barack Obama, who somehow, some way manages to get elected president of the United States, not just once, but twice, giving, having being given four years to prove what he was going to do with the nation and having proved what he was going to do to it 
and the immense unpopularity of this man and his and his politics and what he's done and what he's going to do even even the statement to the russian president you know after the election i'll have a lot more stuff that i'm going to do okay i can do a lot more stuff after this election so everybody knows that then he gets reelected and i'm just i am stunned on the night of the election i'm just going how did this happen most of the country hates this guy. Why did he get reelected again? I don't know. I don't know. I, you say, well, there was, uh, you know, they, they, they messed with the voting things. I do know this. There were some, some places like in Philadelphia or something like that in certain neighborhoods, Barack Hussein gets 100% of the vote. Um, yeah, nah, nah, nah. Was this, is Barack Hussein the beast? No, he's not. Is there a principality, and this is my point with this, is there a principality that a, a, a devil, a spirit, that we are at war against if, um, if Barack wanted to come to Bethel Church, sit down for a church service, praise the Lord. I preach to him. He needs to hear the gospel. He needs to hear the truth. I would do it. And you have heard our church pray for the President of the United States. Our fight is not with him. It is with the principality that, number one, I can show you from the scripture that that's how it is. But number two, this dream is extremely telling. Um, he sees a giant figure with a ghostly mask. And this figure says to him, it's time. And then his whole body begins to shake violently with that sound as if, as it, and he said, as if I were breaking apart. That's either, that was either a, a very, very evil spirit or... Barack was having a Pensacola outpouring or a Toronto blessing. One of the one or the other. And I guess in either instance, you're still dealing with a a, a very, very bad spirit. Um, when you when I read that, I begin to shake violently. I'm thinking of the lunatic. I'm thinking of those in the Bible who were possessed with devils. That when Jesus went to cast the devil out, okay, that devil shook that person. And then it left. Um, I, you know what? We, we've, we forgot about devil possession in this country. If you, go to, if you go to third world countries, you'll see it. You'll see manifestations of it. You'll see guys running around with their eyes rolled back in their head and acting like snakes and stuff like that, and they're creepy. That's what you'll see. You'll see stuff like you saw in The Exorcist. We don't see a lot of that here in America, and, I, and it's not because... We're so much better than they are. Oh, I don't think so. I think it's because the demonic possession of people in this country is more subtle. And the, those that are possessed are operating.